you're not super uh, comfortable throwing lamp at long distances, uh, an easy tip, mm -hmm. and you might already know this, is it follows the same trajectory as your your healing grenades. One right click, sorry, not right click uh, on console, uh, one healing grenade. Just Find, follow seeing, it. Seeing where that lands, the lamp will follow that exactly. So what rank are we looking at for this? Is this a GM VOD? Uh, yeah, so this, like, there's a lot of, like, these are the best players on PS4. This is a PS4 VOD, by the way. Okay. Um, and, like, there's, like, I think there's, like, three, no, there's, like, five top ten players in this game. And I'm I'm comfortable around 4.1, but, like, I peaked at 4.4. So that's, that's sort of about so where I'm some, at. So you got some experience under your belt. I can see that from your, your profile icon, too. You got the diamond border. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, talking about about Baptista specifically, you mentioned swapping into Moira. Um, I would yeah. say both Moira and Bap are just as good at healing for Rush, and I would only pick Moira over Bap if you're worried about your own survivability in these kind of matchups. Um, okay. The amount of healing you put out is basically the same. It's a lot easier on Moira, but it sounds like you're comfortable on enough on Baptista to land your healing and all that. Uh, and then just obviously the utility of immortality field as well as your amplification matrix can be much, much, much more explosive than what Moira okay. has to offer. Um, not to say it's a bad pick. It's just if you're picking Moira just because it's Rush, Baptiste can also get that job done. All right. So just wanted to bring that up. Um, since this is a somewhat higher level VOD than uh, some of the average stuff we get, we are going to be talking about some probably deeper concepts, some like team sure. play stuff as well as like coordinating with your... Uh, with your teammates is not just individual stuff, but we'll get okay. into that once it comes up. So yeah, I don't have a lot to say about Moira in general. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll swap off for my first ult. So okay, it, it shouldn't be too long. The only it's thing a pretty brain dead character. Mm -hmm. I mean, the only things you could maximize are just like uh, instead of like hard holding. I, I want to call it your left click. I'm not super familiar with the controller fi configurations, but I'll I'll call them like primary fire or like certain ability. Yeah, 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 I uh, understand so, what you're saying. Yeah, so using your your heal spray, your primary fire, um, mm -hmm. you want to tap that in burst as much as possible, unless someone's in like super critical condition. So I know this is okay. primarily going to be a bat pod, but just in touch with some Moira stuff, the way you're holding down a lot of left click, um, this is how you'd look like if your Ryan was in their face swinging constantly. You'd you'd need that heal time. But to yeah. get the most healing out of uh, out of your juice, you want to make sure you're tapping it as much as possible. Okay, because I know I know they nerfed the uh, overheal mm -hmm. um, not too not too recently. It was like a couple few months ago. Like they nerfed it so it's like only a couple seconds after you yeah. heal. Like there's like a little bit of overheal. There used to be a lot more, so I didn't know if that was optimal to hold now or or not. So that's good to know. It's still obviously it's it's less than what it used to be, but it's still. Um, it's still more valuable to tap it. Okay. All right, now we're keeping for alt. Um, I guess the biggest thing for Moira alt is <clears throat> not only uh, getting good tempo with it, but finding priority targets to damage while you're doing it. And one of my favorite targets to point out is obviously uh, Far of Mercy. Oh, yeah, seriously how garbage this is. Uh, <laughs> so get ready. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, DPS are falling left and right. I know, it's not fun. I'm ready for the coalescence play. Let's see it. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> so looking at this. Oh wait, I gotta. I got flamed so hard for that. <laughs> That's tragic. So right around. I want to say like right around here. Once we get the Rhine pick, we yeah. know we want to be going aggressive, and ideally we we're moving faster as a team than this. But even these ultimates. They shouldn't mean anything. And I know your your shift got forced out a little bit here, but this is like yeah. an ideal opportunity to just shift through these mines and then pop your coalescence right away. It's, okay. yeah. it's really common practice to... Uh, this is something that applies to Winston as well. I don't know if you play that hero at all. But to I burn, do. Your, yeah. burn your cooldowns right before your ult because there's nothing mm -hmm. you can do during your ult to use them. You can't shift... Or sorry, you can't fade. Uh, you can't throw out orbs. So make sure you get those out and then right. start coalescing just to get the maximum value out of your kit. Same like with Winston. Okay. Make sure you jump, make sure you throw down your bubble before you primal, because you, you can't do either of those things. Or, I, well, I mean, you can jump, but you get them back once you're finished primaling. Um, right. Also, makes sense for Zenyatta, throw out both your orbs, get a discord out while you're transcending, because you can't use them while you're ulting. 
All right. So, yeah. It's a good habit to get into. <laughs> oh, that's tragic. Yeah, no. But that's okay. That bad. means we get to start looking at the, our primary focus of the Baptiste. Board. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it looks like your team's not doing too bad, though. So talk to me nah. about sort of your mindset on Baptiste. Why? Why more recently have you felt sort of out of favor of him and leaning towards the Lucio? Uh, no. So I've been a Lucio the, like okay, okay. for a, a couple years now. Like he's my favorite hero. But Bap mm -hmm. is just so good. That, I mean, he's, he's he needs to be played sometimes. <laughs> he needs to be played a lot, especially at these ranks. Like you just can't get away with Lucio all the time anymore. So I like this toss. It's a little bit ahead of where you probably wanted it. You probably wanted it to land somewhere around here. I'm guessing. Yeah, um, yeah. To one, support this grab and then push in deeper. But I like that you're making the effort coming back from spawn uh, to get this cooldown out. If you're not super uh, comfortable throwing lamp at long distances. Uh, an easy tip, mm -hmm. and you might already know this, is it follows the same trajectory as your your healing grenades. Um, so if you're not I actually, sure, I actually had no idea. I had no <laughs> idea. So if you're not sure, and you have the time, like if, in this situation, you weren't the ones being grabbed, so you didn't need like an immediate lamp, I would say. Um, but mm -hmm. if you take the time to shoot off one right click, sorry, not right click uh, on console, uh, one healing grenade, just find, follow seeing, it. it. Seeing where that lands, the lamp will follow that exactly. Oh, that's that's actually a really good tip. Wow. It's also, you have to keep in mind, though, that the, the lamp it will bounce off walls and stuff like that. So if you're aiming mm -hmm. for a specific on the wall, keep in mind it's going to like bounce off a certain distance or stuff like that. Or sometimes it'll skip as well, depending on how you what things you hit. Okay. But yeah. General, if you need time practicing long distance lamps, uh, they can be pretty niche, but they can pay off big time if you hit them. That's a good way to get comfortable with the, the trajectory. Yeah. But yeah, just a little bit too late on that, and that's not entirely your fault. It was just uh, a bit of a scrappy team fight both ways. Okay, we're getting set up now for a real fight. We are no longer on rush, unfortunately, so we can't talk about Bap and Rush. Um, no. Nah. Funnily enough, as I mentioned, Bap is just as good as Moira um, in in rush comps. In these, uh, I mean, I don't want to call this a double off tank comp because. If it's ball, and ball's more of a main tank, but right. the, these compositions where your tanks are going to be split, um, the the space that ball is fighting for is likely going to look very different than the space uh, hog is fighting for. This is one mm -hmm. of the situations in, when Bap in which Baptiste is probably the weakest, in which right. someone like um, Zenyatta, Mercy, Moira, maybe, um, and uh, Ana would probably be the strongest in a situation like this. So... Not to say you need to pick these heroes, but it's going to make your job a lot harder as Baptiste, and you're going to be a lot need a lot more situational awareness. Uh, and the biggest thing, uh, as most healers, is you need to be keeping track of your tanks. And keep in mind that in comps like this, it's not just where the hog is pushing, but what the ball is doing at that same time that you'll need to keep in the back of your mind. Okay. I think part of why I swapped to it is because the pharmacy would be a a little easier to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Just the difference of damage in one small. We've also got the lamp to deal with uh, our aggression. Ooh, that was really scary. I I probably would have lamped in that situation. Um, would you? Okay. Yeah, because no, it's crazy. I mean, obviously, you didn't get punished, but uh, since McCree yeah. kind of needs to win this duel in order for Farrah to feel any kind of pressure, seeing her go all in like this from your POV, and yeah, her falling that low, but your McCree being just as low, either lamping like right where you're aiming right now, um, right. Or expecting McCree to use this space and lamping inside here could be really, really strong. Okay. But yeah, if yeah, McCree sometimes I hold, I, sometimes I hold it too long. I think like I'm waiting for like mm -hmm. a, a a better moment when I shouldn't. Like I should be using it there. Like right. Said. So there's a lot of obvious times to use lamp. Um, mm -hmm. Biggest one is right. use it like a defensive ultimate. Use it to counter things like graviton surge. Use things to counter if your team gets shattered by a Reinhardt or if a teammate gets hooked. If there's some obvious influx of damage coming through, that's an easy lamp. Um, there's these yeah. more uh, contextual situations in which lamp is still very good. And in this kind of situation, if McCree was allowed to stay aggressive because he knew he was safe, he, maybe he gets the kill on that Farah before she flies away, and he doesn't need to okay. worry about falling back. Maybe it right. means just not giving up a kill because we just found a trade on the soldier. If we keep McCree alive, now we've got a man advantage. And we'd have, r rather have a man advantage than a lamp advantage most of the time. Sure, okay. So I'm not saying throw it out every time you feel a little bit of damage is coming through, but there are situations in which you can be more aggressive with the lamp usage just to win smaller advantages and not always just countering big ultimates and big plays. 
Okay, that makes sense. Another good way to think about it, since you are uh, a pretty high rated player, is these small advantages like that lamp can deny um, mm -hmm. can also turn into really aggressive opportunities if you find those advantages without lamp. So what I mean by that um, is seeing that soldier go down, for example, you're already at a man advantage. Imagine this, this duel never happened and our, everyone's safe. We're about to push in. We see yeah. one of their members go down. We can be extremely liberal with our lamp usage. Just throw it in. And now, and, and now your whole no team's fear. immortal, and you can just yeah. do whatever you want. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, same right. on an even smaller advantage scale. Imagine going up an, against an enemy Baptiste. You see him use lamp. You still got yours, even though your team's healthy. Give them that confidence to just push in with your own lamp, and just yeah, just roll over them because you have that immortality. They don't. It's something they don't have. Um, you see yeah. this concept in like May mirrors. If one May uses a May wall, then the other one can just go crazy aggressive with theirs because they know no one's going to get cut off. If, right. Uh, same thing with some support ultimates like Lucio Beat, even. Like if you see them use a bunch of ultimates that you didn't need to counter, and now you're thinking, oh, I've got Beat and there's nothing I'm waiting for. You can just use that Beat aggressively and just win the team fight because you have Beat and they've got nothing to deal with it. Okay. Yeah, that so makes it's just, sense. There's like a smaller scale version of that. Yeah, even though this lamp like isn't perfect, like look how stable you're gonna be because of it. Even just for yourself in that situation. Oh no. Okay, we got her. Hog <laughs> <Unlocked> safety. <laughs> we take those. Um, generally, talking about kiting, just as an example. So we started here. We ended up kiting all the way back here. Uh, keep yeah. in mind that kiting doesn't always mean walking towards your spawn. It can. It should be walking towards where you are the safest. And if I'm okay. going, if I'm Baptiste against someone like Farah, I want mm -hmm. to get away from this thing. This is Farah's playground. This tower. That's her cover. That's yeah, easy exactly. cover for her. So right. you kiting around this cover is just like, okay, fine. I'll LOS the Roadhog by following you. Ah, um, uh, okay. That makes sense. Versus yeah. maybe kiting in this direction or even towards coast. Maybe you're a bit more, I mean, not all the way towards coast. You don't, you don't want to get boofed off the map. But even like playing in here, maybe kiting inside here to get the mini room means Farah, if she wants to stay on you, has to just stay above the point. And, and I mean, in this case, it didn't matter too much because Hog hit a nice hook, but it makes it right. that much easier for Hog to hit that hook if she's forced to stay in that aggressive positioning. That makes a lot of sense. See, like Lucio, like I, I don't have to care about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so kind of I need to know cruising. the positioning. Yeah. Yeah. Baptiste, uh, one of the good things about him is he does have that slight mobility in his vertical jump in his exo right. boots so you can do stuff like play this play up here and then like drop down and juke them vertically not just uh horizontally or on the ground you can add that okay. extra axis to make aiming even harder for them um right but yeah just the general concept of kiting don't think necessarily towards spawn always think to what's the safest and sometimes that means into where your team has control sometimes that means flipping the map on the enemy team like maybe even going up here might have been a, a better option if pharaoh was coming from this direction um, it's always okay. about the context of what's going on. Got it. But yeah, you handled that fairly well, and you had such an advantage, it didn't really matter where you went, <laughs> that that Pharaoh right. was unlikely to get a kill anyway. Yeah, even if I died, probably still Yeah, you probably would have won the point. But always room for optimization. Absolutely, yeah. So we're coming up on Baptiste's window, the ultimate. Do you have any thoughts... Uh, about the ultimate. This is usually the hardest part of his kit to find value out of. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm terrible with it. <laughs> I'm terrible with it. Alright, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, there's an easy lamp, for example. Yeah, sure I know how to do the easy one. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, you never want to waste lamp for when there's a situation coming up in which you'll need an easy lamp. But if you can right. read the fight well enough to know that you won't need those easy lamps, and the best way to do that is like, do they have Shatter? Do they have Barrage? Do they have Mines? Do they have Graviton Surge? Do they have these yeah. big ultimates that are, would be good for me to counter? If not, maybe I can be a bit more aggressive with it. Right. That's fair. Right. I'm excited for the window play. I'm sure it's awful. I don't remember. <laughs> and I, I have no idea. So I'm, I'm actually in suspense right now. Like last <laughs> Anything could happen. Yeah. Oh no. So, I had no idea things. she was there yet. Yeah. yeah. One of the things about this sort of, um, again, I can't call it a double off tank comp, but this split tank comp that we're running right. is that no space is safe. 
Um, right. Even mm -hmm. if your hog's like in the front line pushing forward, he's not going to win a front line fight against a Reinhardt. Um, even like no. if they had someone like a Sigma, he probably wouldn't get much space. So hogs playing an independent game, balls playing an independent game right now. You need to play an independent game as one of the backline members. You need to be very, very cautious because the tanks aren't working for you. They're working for themselves, and sometimes that will benefit yeah. you because, like, the amount of space they're creating just by existing, or if they get picks, or if people turn to deal with them instead of you, you get space passively off that. But it's not like someone like Reinhardt or Sigma or Orisa or even Zarya, where they're thinking about you when they're running around. They're thinking right. about themselves. Maybe Ball's thinking about Tracer and Sombra and setting up dives for them, but no one is thinking about you. So, unfortunately, you're a little... Well, you're a lonely Baptiste in the back line and, and plays like this. It's, it'd be even worse yeah, if they had someone like Tracer who would be just on you all the time. Hopefully, maybe your Lucio would help in those situations, but always be thinking about this and always be very, very conscious of your movement. You want to yeah. be always like cover to cover, always thinking is like, if I'm not in a place I want to be, if I'm out in the open like this, where do I want to be and how do I get there as fast as possible? Right. Okay. In this situation, I mean, pathing like this is much safer. Uh, gets you relatively same sight lines until you get into the open. Like if you're trying to heal this hog here, you can do that safely mm -hmm. from here. Uh, and as well as Baptiste, you should always be thinking about positioning and where you can put um, out of line of sight lamps. So indoor areas like this, if you can just like lamp here and keep you immortal, immortal here and here, that's an extremely right. good lamp versus where can't just, get shot. Yeah. yeah, versus just on top of yourself or out in the open kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I mean. This was a good play by the Pharah, uh, end of the day. So it's not really uh, expected of you all the time to be ready for everything, but always be proactive, as proactive as possible, especially in these situations where no one's uh, no one's making your job easy. It's mainly on your shoulders. That makes find sense. Find that positioning and keep yourself safe. Yeah. Sure. It would be the same if you were playing someone like McCree in this game, where no one's doing any favors for the McCree, but he can still find good value if he gets the space. Right. That right okay, I remember. I remember where it went, dude. I okay. remember now. Are we yeah. going aggressive with it? We're we're looking like it. <laughs> I think I take that top space and use it mm -hmm. from the top left. So, I like the jumping a little bit. Um, I'd be careful about making this a habit. This jumping right now is good because the person you're dueling is a Farah, and you want to. Because they don't have a widow. From... Yeah. Yeah. Thing, even a soldier. <laughs> Um, these really high jumps you're making, unless you're using it to like go from here up to the top, uh, just constantly mm -hmm. bouncing up and down. As you said, like it's very easy to track that movement. Even normal jumping, like just on the ground from a normal character, can be really predictable for someone like a widow or someone like a soldier yeah. who might have that comfortability tracking someone like that. For um, sure. So always something to to watch out for. Um, and I just want to make sure you're not in the mindset of that's a long looking hook, it almost hits. Uh, it, just want to make sure you're not always in the mindset of like, okay, I just always need to be jumping because I'm always moving. But specifically yeah. for the Farah duel, it's not a bad option. And even someone like Ball, it's not a bad option to get away from his boops, get away from the slam, stuff like that. Right. And again, lingering too much in the open. Uh, yeah, think, this is a really bad spot to play at. If we start here, we're talking about taking space. This is not the this is not the end goal. We want to be no. maybe, maybe moving up here, maybe jumping up here aggressively, maybe playing inside castle, uh, maybe playing safe and long distance, maybe even like staying back at the choke, depending how aggressive the enemy team's being. But always move with purpose. We don't okay. want to be yeah, stuck was, in the open. That was brain dead for sure. <laughs> and it, it's easy. I don't. I don't. It's definitely not brain dead. So don't don't get that in your mind. It's you are focusing <laughs> on everything else around you. It's it's Overwatch. It's a chaotic game. There's so much going on at any given moment that is very, very easy to focus on other things than positioning. Right, that's fair. So looking at the situation like this, just always remind yourself like, hey, did I die because of my positioning? Probably in this instance. I, had, I was open sight lines to both Soldier and Farah. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't give myself a good lamp spot. So how can I do better next time? Um, and if you can, try to preemptively plan these kind of movements. Try thinking to yourself like, okay, uh, Right now, as you're walking through the choke, you see where your team is. I should probably get inside castle so I can back them up mm -hmm. and be safe from the Farah. If your team's fighting okay. more in the open, uh, I probably want to swing wide left and try and get up those stairs so I have a safe angle. Uh, I can lamp myself if I need to and have good healing on my team as I'm going up. That if you can sense. get 
that planning out of the way before you start shooting at Faras, dealing with flanking soldiers, watching out for uh, enemy uh, wrecking balls, then it'll just come second nature to you and you can focus on shooting and being in the moment during those fights, but you'll already be having that game plan in the back of your mind of where you're going, where you want to end up, that kind of thing. Right, right. It's better to have a plan than just go out in the open and exactly. just react to it, everything. It's right. very easy to get stuck in those traps. It's, this is something I, I, I mainly tell like main tank players, where it's like, if you don't know where you're going, you're costing the entire team just some wasted time. There right. should always be a purpose to where you're moving, uh, whether it's for yourself or for the team. And the same applies for you when there's no one else working for the same space as yourself. Okay, so they window there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, speaking of window really quickly, how mm -hmm. long have we had it? If yeah, I, way if, too long. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to go back, I'd say it's been about two minutes since we first built yeah. it. Um, yeah. So, one, you could probably build another one, but if you had just used it really aggressively, even if it was wasted, uh, you'd probably have another one up by now, by the time the CMP is going out. Uh, and oh, two, yeah. yeah, let me just stop that SMG sound. That was horrible. Um, it's a not an easy ultimate to use for yourself or if, even for your team to use. It's not something like a Graviton Surge. It's not something like even a Diva Bomb, who, which at higher ranks becomes really, really hard to use. It's not something like EMP like we're seeing right now. Um, that's just your team sees that happen. They know exactly what to do. Uh, it's a very contextual ultimate that changes how much value it gets depending on what is going on around you, what the sort of tempo is, what the different compositions are. It's uh, anything but simple. So... Because right. of that, yes, you can be big brain about it and find huge value ultimates, but more often than not, it's going to be more of like a middling ultimate where maybe it's just causing them to back up, and that's fine. Maybe it's just causing them uh, to lose some shield pressure, and that's fine. Don't try to squeeze the utmost value out of it because the, the amount of times those situations come up, especially in a ranked environment compared to like organized team play, is very, very low. Yeah. I, I would say okay. like even thinking to yourself like, hey, we're going into an open sight line. I can open the fight with some with window pressure that'll force them on their side of the bridge and we don't need to worry about boops anymore. Right. Just something as simple as that, that's value. Mm -hmm. uh, or okay. even something like, oh, Ryan's walking up, he's got he's he's holding shield like right in the middle of the bridge. He, he's got no cover, he can immediately fall behind. Let's just burn his shield down. Yeah, that's fair. So it, the zone is better than just to hold it for like yes, two minutes, absolutely. obviously. <laughs> yeah. Finding something is better than nothing. Not, not right. to say you're not doing anything, but uh, your ultimate is doing nothing, sitting fully charged in the middle of your screen. Right. Man, I've been excited so for this ultimate for so long, we're still holding it, but that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I used the top left on, I think it was on defense then, because, mm, okay. yeah, I just don't remember. <laughs> Good news is, oh. now that we're on third point, it's going to be a little bit easier to find value, because the sight lines are yeah. a lot more linear. Uh, it's going to benefit yeah. yourself as well as your the rest of your team more. Although, God. there's not really anyone on your team that's going to benefit from it. Maybe just the healing from it if they would go forward. I didn't hold on to it the whole game, did I? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, almost. We were thinking about it. <laughs> and I was like, ah, the fight's won. I'll just hold on to it for... I'm yeah. saving it for, the ne for defense. Yeah, for, for defense, saving for it. sure. Yeah. Oh, man. If Overwatch <laughs> worked that way, there would be a lot of angry people. <laughs> All right, this is looking like a good setup. Okay, perfect. You just became a very threatening DPS player. Yeah, honestly, that wasn't bad. Um, no kills really came through it, but look how slow their Ryan had to play um, and look how much time you built for your team. Unfortunately, our Sombra goes down. Ideally in this situation, like we force them because you're windowing past these corners and we get one, free card space. Uh, and two, we deny their main tank, Reinhardt, from coming out and enabling the rest of their backline. So they're kind of stuck in right. these zones, which right. typically leads to easier setups for Sombra, Tracer, Ball, even D.Va to follow up. Right. Didn't look like especially that was the with, case. It's, well, especially with Brig, because when Ryan, when Ryan can't do anything, Brig is basically useless too. Yeah, exactly. That's and you, you saw them. They yeah. were just holding their shield, and they were like, oh, geez, I don't want to walk into this, even though it's just you shooting through it. That's how scary right. you were. Oh, just, oh, it's just outside of it. it. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go back just out. a little bit. I want to see what happened exactly during this window from a third-person field. So yeah, the soldier's tack visor 
was kind of like you kind of traded with tac visor where both teams kind of got stuffed a little bit we kill the soldier but also our somber goes down and now mm -hmm. that uh, your window's winding down and our somber's down now they feel the confidence to come out tragic about the lucio but yeah they they did a good, did a pretty good job stabilizing so it became hard to find a lot of value but i still think that play was uh it was better than not using your window <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I really think it's all just <laughs> it's all just about mindset, about um, trying to not necessarily get the most value out of it, but find some immediate value so that your team can work off that. I think that Lucio was close to beat, so I was letting him heal himself yeah, for yeah. a second. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Ooh. What oh, HP? No, I should have selfishly used it. Oh no. Well, what I would have done, what I, or what I should say, what I would have liked to see. Uh, is one pop your regen regenerative burst? It's a bit of a tongue twister, and just play the sight line. Uh, the threat yeah. that was that was approaching you was from the back, the soldier, and here uh, he's able to shoot you. Uh, he's not able to shoot you as early as if you continually walk forward. Like I understand, definitely trying to get to the lamp, uh, but the fact that you committed it somewhere else, you kind of have to resign yourself to not benefiting from that lamp. Uh, right. Unless the That's soldier fair. misses all his shots. Um, you're better off potentially living by subjecting yourself only to the tanks and not the, the soldier right away. Or even like I, falling back in here. I think part of it was I, I was so caught off guard that there was a soldier behind us. <laughs> that I was like, I was like, what bit, is going on? Panic, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, so I panicked for sure. It happens. And it looks like this is the end of our attack, but that's okay. So yeah, biggest note so far definitely the positioning stuff um not just keeping up in a fight but playing for yourself playing for yourself to find good positioning to keep yourself alive and to do the most damage and healing throughout an extended team fight um, okay it's much harder to do this when your tanks aren't playing for obvious space that benefits you like yeah. ball like roadhog even like any dive tank uh, and those are typically reasons i would suggest other heroes uh that can benefit those tanks and that you can benefit more from those tanks as well so People like um, Ana, for example, you get better range, better healing on the tanks themselves. And you can play further back in general without sacrificing too much. I, I guess the one question I have with that is that um, playing Ana with, with a comp like that, I, I worry about more about my survivability. Mm -hmm. um, like, it, you're just way easier to dive, I feel, as Ana. But, I mean, you know better than I do, so at least tell <laughs> you know, inform so, me. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you have less individual utility. Um, but right. you, you you can trade that utility for being able to play longer distances. So, for example, um, when we were attacking first point and you were mm -hmm. playing up here to keep up with the tanks and be able to right. heal them like around point, Ana would be able to play back inside here. Right back there. Yeah. And just take scope shots, even maybe potentially somewhere like here if your tanks are smart enough to come to you for healing. Uh, but mm -hmm. this is obviously like your safest, most effective position and you can get more precise healing on the targets you need. Um, okay. Whereas Bap wants to be up a little bit closer, landing the easier AOE shots uh, and being able to use his jump effectively and be able to get into the team fight himself as well as do some. So, seeing, of so is Ana like the DPS have to overcommit if they want to? Like if you play it smart. Uh, right? What do you mean exactly by that? Sorry. Like they, their, D, their DPS have to like go way yes. out of position yes, to get exactly. you. Um, whereas with Bap, it's it's yeah, it's not as it's not as hard, I guess. Yeah. And there are a lot. There's a lot of overlap between the two, for sure. They're both ranged healers for a reason. So there's going to be a lot of overlap between uh, priority positionings for both of them. But generally, Bap's the one who wants to keep up more in a team fight. Um, Ana right. doesn't sacrifice too much by playing further back because you're always going to be able to hit that healing as long as you have the sight line. Um, okay. Bap is a lot more in favor these days because I mean, obviously the lamp, as we talked about, uh, but mm -hmm. also just the AOE healing that he brings compared to Ana's single target healing. Uh, can be absolutely massive for these brawly tank compositions where you're seeing Ryan Zarya, Ryan Diva, and they're just always on top of each other, so it's really easy to hit that AoE. Okay. But again, it requires keeping up with them. And and yeah, like I said, the, the main reason it was hard to find positioning as BAP from that last round was because the tanks didn't benefit you. Uh, but now, oops, that's not you. Now that we're looking at Ryan Diva, we're looking at a pretty standard brawl comp coming through. Yeah, uh, you'll much, be able to, much better for BAP, right? Yeah, exactly. You'll be always able to keep up with your tanks. 
uh, the space they're fighting for is going to be the same space you're fighting for. Uh, and you'll be able to hit both tanks with one grenade. So it's a ton more healing just by existing. <laughs> right. Another good thing, they don't really have any uh, flanking threats to you. There's no fire in the air. I guess there's this ball coming through. This is not bad. So remember what I mentioned about the jumps. Yeah, jumping terrible is... spot for a soldier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jumping and high ground are good when there mm -hmm. are like active threats that benefit from you being on the ground. So someone like a tracer yeah. flanking and you being right here, you'll probably want to yep. jump up here. Someone like a Farah hitting splash damage rockets, you probably want to jump around a bit. But yeah. against this double hit scan, and I'm hoping we recognize they were on double hit scan by this point, making sure we're checking the, the info screen at 15 seconds and what they have. <laughs> uh, the only reason I'd like to see you rolling up here is if you see mm -hmm. their ball like doing a big rollout looking for a slam right here, and you want to avoid that damage. I should be dead here. Like They have a soldier <laughs> and a Kree. Like, I should mm -hmm. definitely be dead. Yeah, it takes two shots from Kree, but we're okay. So there's a bit uh, of an interesting lamp. So you didn't use this lamp because there was anything big coming through, right? You used this to try and get aggressive with yes. what it looks like. Yes. And that's good. This is exactly what we're talking about. The only so thing I did that it changed. Just so Sorry? I could shoot at them. Like, I did it so I didn't have to worry about healing, so I could just put pepper and damage because I noticed their shield was at disadvantage at that right. point. Like, their shield was lower. So I was like, all right, we can go aggressive. Perfect. You know who does that? Hmm. Violet <laughs> from the San Francisco Shock. This oh, is one of his really? yeah. This is one of his favorite moves. He'll just ignore his team. He's like, "Hey, you're fine. I'll throw a lamp on you," and then he'll just laser down his enemies. So, <laughs> it's super valuable. And I don't want to I don't want to discredit that, but I do want to say that you could have improved okay. this play. Um, so sure. One, How? knowing mm -hmm. that we got a pick, knowing that we want to be aggressive, knowing we had shield advantage, like you said, we know we're going to be pushing forward. Put this it further lamp, up. Yes, exactly. Yeah. This lamp is really safe now that they're back around the corner. They can't shoot it. But throwing it somewhere like right here on this corner means we can like mm. we could even uh, so imagine I'm you and I throw it right in that corner. We could even swing right here and still benefit from it. We could swing right here and sure we'd be taking Ryan swings. We don't want to get booped out of it, of course. Uh, but we're around this corner being as aggressive as possible while still keeping our lamp extremely safe. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, it's about anticipating the team fight movement. So where you put it was great for where you started. But since they were already backing up, in order to actually benefit from it, we need to move past it. And since we yeah. knew we were at advantage, we should be expecting that forward momentum. Um, it's the same as if we were expecting them to push into us. Like, say we're holding this corner. Mm -hmm. Say we're holding defensively here, and we lost right. our Rhine shield. You wouldn't want to put a lamp right here, because we're going to be running away from it anyway. Even if we sure. use the lamp to its utmost, Rhine's going to be at 100 HP by the time it's over, and then he's just going to go down anyway. So you'd want to throw okay. it back around here back where we're kiting into and where they're pushing into us so that we can benefit from it um, and then by then hopefully our resources can come back and we can play a little bit more aggressively once those are back i'm glad you pointed that out that makes a lot of sense <laughs> so yeah it's 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 called tempo uh, in high level play is what people call it and it's basically the, the idea uh, if you were to break down overwatch into a turn-based rpg right now it's our turn to attack so we use we use stuff aggressively if it's their turn to attack uh, and we've already used our stuff, then we need to use more stuff defensively in order to survive that attack kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, right now, tempo's in our favor, whereas in the other situation, tempo would be in their favor, and we need to play more defensively. It's right. very hard to read, but I think you already have a, a good understanding of it. It's just about um, squeezing a little bit more value out of your kit for it. Sure. And yeah, see how easy it is to keep up with your tanks now that you've got a Rhine in front of you? <laughs> so much easier. This is yeah. Baptiste Playground, for sure. I think I die here, because, oh, no. yeah, I Rhine oh, well. pinned out. I was like, yeah. oh my god, I was pissed. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I didn't that's say a, anything, but I was pissed. That's an F on the report card. Um, <laughs> but, but even before that, um, yeah. so here, let me go back 10 seconds. Let's just look at this from third-person POV. So, yes, this is really good. Um, mm -hmm. And I didn't want to say anything unless you got punished, but we are seeing you get punished. So let's talk about um, you are a ranged healer and you're kind of positioning as if you're a Brigham Warrior right now. You're playing yeah. right behind the Rhine Shield and you're not playing there to get damage. If you were like running up here trying to like laser on the soldier and he was like about to die, 
then this could be warranted. But you're playing up here to heal primarily. Uh, if I go back to when we were running up. Saw you following, and you're basically just spamming healing on your tanks this whole time, right? Yep. And sure, maybe get it closing the distance a bit to get the shift out. Sorry, not shift. Uh, regenerative first. It's a, Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's maybe a little bit more value, but in all... In reality, you could be doing exactly what you're doing right now from a position like this. Sure, okay. Or from a position like this. And it's, again, thinking about where you want to end up during a fight. If this is where we're fighting, you don't want to be right here. You want to be right here or, or back around the corner like we talked about. Right, right. So you could play that pillar cover. Yeah. If we were pushing all the way around the next corner, you'd probably want to keep mm -hmm. up with your Ryan and then stay back here as he keeps pushing or something like that. Um, but right. You can have so much influence by using these sight lines and have zero threat to yourself. And then even if your Ryan decides to pin away from you, um, you can still stabilize yourself based on your own a uh, little bit selfish positioning kind of thing. Okay. Um, there was something I wanted to bring up and I can't remember it now. I was going to say, I think the only time, again, like you would want to keep this up is if you're planning on pushing even further. So like if you're moving aggressively, say we mm -hmm. are like we're just bursting around this corner and then we're planning yeah. to fight here, like where we are, you want right. to keep up with your Rhine up to this point. So you want to start with your Rhine and burst through that space with him, uh, but then let him keep going and start detaching yourself as the fight goes on. Because again, similar to thinking about tempo, the longer we spend setting up our attack or trying to find value at attack, the more time they're getting to build up resources to push us back. And as we're seeing from yeah. this ball boop, uh, it, that's just enough time for them to split us up and put us out of position. And yeah, we spent all of that Rhine Shield going in. Now we've got no Rhine Shield uh, and no safe positioning to stabilize. Ryan decides he's out of here. <laughs> I mean, he absolutely should have stayed with you. At the very least, just to get healed up and then you walk out together. But um, sometimes oh, it happens. Oh, yeah. No, my positioning was garbage, <laughs> but I was still upset. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tragedy. So yeah, um, one way of thinking about it is like when you're at the very start of team fights, when you're bursting through space, notably pushing around corners and pushing through chokes, you want to stay tight to your team because you don't want to get lost behind that choke. You don't want to get lost behind a corner kind of thing. But right. once you have those more open space, more open sight lines, ooh, so close to saving him. Uh, once you have that space to work with, you want to abuse it and abuse the fact that you are a ranged healer. You're not Brig. You don't need to be up there to proc inspire. You're not Moira. You don't need to be within the range of your primary fire. Okay. Makes sense. I th I th they definitely take this point. They, they make it all the way to third point, but we win, barely. Alright, we talked a little bit about uh, your ultimate on offense. Do you think it changes mm -hmm. much when we're talking about defense? Do you have any uh, about it? No. No, I think it <laughs> uses it the exact same way. Okay. The only thing I would say you can do differently on defense than typically on offense is since you're by default starting with space, you control the point, you control the angles, stuff like that. You can position wherever you want to, even if it's a good or a bad position. Um, sure. So you, there are some creative ways you can use that defensive advantage to your advantage <laughs> uh, when using your window in particular. Uh, and okay. This is something that's probably most commonly seen on Koth points, but applies to anything with an objective that teams are trying to get to. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. basically, you want to be the most annoying roadblock in their way, um, but you don't want to show that you're in their way until they've sort of committed to a push. So right, that makes sense. This is a bit of a hard one because the range isn't super long. But for example, yeah. if we see them just slowly walking up, and they commit maybe past this line, either in this direction or in this direction, then we can throw windows up um, so that if they've decided to push, if they're about to use stuff like speed, oh, they don't have speed. If they're about to round the corner with Ryan Shield and start walking up, you put a window right in their face, and then they either have to commit to try and getting past the window, get pushing through you with all that damage coming through anyway, or right. it at the very least stalls them out, or in an even better case scenario, it enables our own aggression. Um, so again, if we were to, thinking about pushing and fighting here, you'd want to like burst through around this corner with your Reinhardt, add the window to that burst potential, 
and then you can have like such a long fight that's in our favor because you're just sitting behind the window pumping out healing pumping out damage that whole time you want to catch them in transition exactly we'll, yeah after they've committed right <clears throat> and since uh sorry excuse me since baptiste window is so hard to get value out of don't be afraid of using this a bit preemptively even if it's too early very worst you've wasted 10 seconds of their time and without exposing anything too risky uh, it's better to okay. do something like that than to throw some a more versatile ultimate like say diva bomb which can be used the same way to slow their tempo or to catch them in transition um, but you probably want diva bomb more in a mid fight than you'd want baptiste window because it's a lot harder okay. to use in the mid fight right i cannot remember how i use this so it should be <laughs> all right let's see i'm trusting we're not going to save it until the the game's over though no, I hope not. <laughs> so like right here, right as you see that that Ryan jump, throw Done a window it. up. And then he's sort of in this limbo where his yeah. team's trying to support him, but you have so much more pressure. Even though they've got more like hit scan damage, you've got a two times McCree, two times uh Baptiste gun, two times fire strike coming at them that they have to worry about. And more than likely this will burn through his shield, force him back, and potentially net uh, an advantage for you to push on that's warranted pushing on and taking a fight in this sort of space um, okay other options that could possibly evolve is they end up committing alts to try and stabilize they commit a defensive alt if they had one if they had rally up for example just to try and survive that and then they can't use that to get aggressive with right there's a lot of there's a lot of depth to alt economy um, and the point i'm basically trying to make is you can use your ultimate less like an ultimate and more like a general ability almost like your lamp to force okay. other abilities even force resources like Ryan's shield um, and that can be a good use of your ultimate because of how hard it is to use okay Ooh. good lamp this is this was really good so this was like basically what we were just talking about um they they right. committed and they committed even harder because they were because their ball went in, and then this it doesn't instantly punish anyone, but it makes them like it makes it a lot harder for them to follow up, especially members that aren't that Reinhardt. Reinhardt has no problem crossing this distance, but his team members that might be back here, like the soldier who I'm guessing was second guessing himself, uh, these yeah. members that we're seeing hiding right now, they're they're not going to want to step right here into your line of fire. Like one shot from you can take them out. So they're gonna yeah. they're gonna let their Ryan keep aggressing if he chooses to, but they're not gonna be able to keep up with him very easily. And sure, yeah, we also beat on top of this, which is probably a bit unnecessary, unfortunately. Uh, but the overall value you got you got out of the window was huge. Ooh, nice little stabilization. That McCree's mad. <laughs> yeah, I think like I wouldn't change much about this. Maybe. If you were planning to do this um, from, yeah. if you knew they were coming this way a little bit sooner, you could have yeah, gone to like a, safer, a safer angle. Yeah, I was too conservative with it. Like, I, I think you had the right idea. I think you just didn't pre-plan your positioning around it too much. So you used it yeah. right here, and that mm -hmm. made you have to position a little bit exposed to this sight line. Versus okay. it. if right. you played a little bit back here, you'd get the same sight line. Um, maybe your, your Rhine would be able to fire strike through it. Actually, wait, sure. you wanted this sight line. So maybe I'm... Maybe something like this instead, too, if you were able to pre-position in time, even from the high uh -huh. ground, potentially, because now Soldier and McCree aren't going to want to duel you when you're doing two times damage. Right. Or if you, had, if you had this McCree up here with you as well, it's even more threatening, and you can shoot over Ryan's shield and stuff like that. So the play was really, really good. Um, it's just a matter of reacting and, and knowing exactly when you want to pull the trigger. Right. Okay. Oops. But yeah, overall, I like that window a lot. That was a good job. like it checking the flanks in case that soldier comes up and look what do you know <laughs> mm, I, don't feel, I just had a feeling man <laughs> you could smell him yeah. unfortunately your rind is committing in a space that we don't have control over um this is sometimes a miscommunication problem and in ranked miscommunication problems are like uh, i don't know i don't have a good analogy sorry 
uh, they're very common. <laughs> they're very common. Yes. yes, exactly. So this space was not under our control as soon as we lost this. And this is something our Rhine needed to understand and needed to back up for so that we could clear this threat, which we do. Our diva does a good job. But he didn't get the memo. He didn't realize Diva was leaving him. He didn't realize you were not able to heal him. He didn't realize McCree had dropped off this high ground to play more safe. Um, and he yeah. thought, it's like, hey, they're running at me. I'm going to swing. And he dies. Yeah. So we're definitely all on comp here. And I definitely okay. said something about it. So. Okay. So maybe it's just a matter of reacting. Um, maybe he, he heard the soldier was here and he thought, hey, that means we should go aggressive because he's not going to be able to shoot me. Maybe. But yeah. in reality, yeah. So um, this is something that honestly probably won't apply to a lot of situations you're in let me turn off this ticking sound really quick oh i can't even hear on your end <laughs> oh, so no, I'm, I'm, just yeah. I'm just driving myself <laughs> crazy over here um <laughs> this kind of situation is so nuanced that the information that soldier is flanking sometimes isn't enough like we said like ryan okay. can interpret that in many different ways diva uh, interpreted it the same way you did, in which we need to react to this threat and deal with it. So as soon as you dropped, Diva flew back and dealt with the soldier. That was good. You right. were both on the same page. This Ryan, for whatever reason, whatever was going on in his mind, for whatever was going on on his screen, had a different plan in mind. So the way right. you alleviate that situation, and this is something I, I teach to like coordinated teams who have uh, trouble with this concept, is taking away priority on information and turning that into action. So okay. Ryan doesn't need to know that this soldier's here. Ryan needs to know that he needs to back up. I'm, I'm so, looking at the old charge, at, at our old charge. I think I know exactly what happened if you look at the Ryan's old charge. He had a shatter <laughs> in mind. Oh, okay, he okay. wanted to use that shatter no matter what. Fair enough. <laughs> and that happens. <laughs> that absolutely happens. That happens to everybody. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to be the perfect player and playing like 12D chess uh, with your teammates, yeah. instead of calling right. something like uh, soldier flanking, play something like say something you can say soldier flanking and, and ask for diva for help and stuff like that but you also add ryan slow down or ryan back up sure so that yeah he knows he's not going to get support yeah so right it's it's really hard to communicate that in the moment and this is something that takes a ton of practice and like i said even the best coordinated teams uh have trouble with something like this because it's not necessarily natural you want to communicate what you see not necessarily think an extra step and play for your teammates kind of thing Oh, with Lucio, I, I'm actually pretty good at it. Like, I I, okay. I could tell my tanks what to do, but with Bap, I'm just not as comfortable on his kit. So, like, I don't... Mm. You know, Lucio, you can have speed boost, so you can control, like, how fast your teammates are going. It's a little easier, sure. I think. You know what and I mean? And I would argue you could do the same with Bap, actually. Like, we talked about uh, using Lamp aggressively. Like, say, right. you, in these situations, to be like, hey, push up, push up, push up, right? You wouldn't just say, like, right. I'm going to Lamp aggressively at this corner. You're going to say, hey, push up, and then you're going to lamp to enable that play, not co not communicate the play itself. Right, okay, yeah. Same for, sense. like, if you were windowing, hey, push up aggressively. In this situation, you might call someone to coordinate the window, like, hey, McCree, hang back, I'm going to window. Hey, Ryan, get a fire strike ready, I'm going to window at the corner. But right. the general concept of the idea that you want to convey is that we want to push aggressively because I'm making this play. We want to push up to this corner because I have a lamp. And it's not the lamp that's important, it's the push. Okay. That's fair. This is looking really, it's really over. tough to stabilize. <laughs> yeah, we're in uh, yeah. we're in deep water right now. Maybe get a bit of extra ult charge, or not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my team's resetting, so yeah. it's fine. I mean, yeah, it's fine. As Baptiste, you're likely not getting away from this fight alive, so that's fine. Yeah. I think, I mean, if you wanted to completely maximize your value you could try and like lamp yourself on point and stall an extra 1.2 seconds or something but <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big of a deal so that was fine all right we're starting on high ground which is good something we always talk about um in terms of positioning is you want to start with the most resources um available to you so for example positioning as a resource you want to start on high ground because gravity doesn't cost you anything and you can drop if you need to and then well, i guess technically for baptiste you can always jump back up if you need to as well but you have more options available to you by starting on the high ground yeah. than by starting on the low ground sure. pretty simple concept but just making sure we talk about it a little bit yep Ooh. Ooh. I didn't realize that Ryan was that low <laughs> at, first, at first when I went. 
Okay, this actually worked out pretty well. Let's go back. Let's watch this from a third person POV. Actually, let's look at this from the enemy soldier's POV. Yeah. I want to see... I don't want to say how easy I'm going to target you were, but I want to see how available you were to be shot at. It's probably really, really available. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, um, this is a really aggressive play. And again, I want to reinforce that concept of disconnecting yourself from the Rhine. Um, you need Rhine with you to get this space, to get maybe this space. But do you need to be there with the Rhine to fight Absolutely for this space? Absolutely not. No, I could still be <laughs> in high ground. 100%. Exactly, exactly. Um, and even if you are getting pressure from a high ground, drop back where you can still use Rhine's pressure and shield and maybe try to dodge the soldier sideline by playing tight to walls. Um, right. But you're not going to be in threat of Rhine swings, of enemy tanks flying into you like an enemy diva, of soldier yeah. getting a slight angle around the shield uh, because he's just close enough in these situations. <laughs> So you can tell about Lucio player. Like I just go balls deep. <laughs> you want to be with the team. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, you know, let's yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> just keep. Imagine if Lucio could like throw a boombox over to his tanks, and they get they get his aura playing whatever song he's got on. That's what you can do as Baptiste. You can throw your boombox away from you and enable your healing, enable your lamp at a distance, and that's a big part of getting the most out of his kit. Okay, that makes sense. I don't know if you've played uh, Heroes of the Storm or anything, but that's actually an ability Lucio has in that game. <laughs> no, I haven't. It's I heard it's wild. good, but I haven't played it's, it. It's a lot of chaotic fun, kind of like Overwatch sometimes. Yeah. Well, this is my favorite game by far. Me too. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in this game. Yeah. By the way, uh, I have to. I regret to inform you that I'm an Outlaws fan. So. Oh, it's okay. I, hope I, don't work, I don't work for the fuel anymore, so there's no bad blood. <laughs> <Okay, laughs> I've got some good. friends on Outlaws. Crimzo's over there now. Yeah. So this is a lot of... Just to watch this from top down. Sure. It doesn't really seem like we know what we want to do. It doesn't seem really like you know what you want to do specifically. You're just kind of keeping everyone alive. Which is right. fine for the time being. Um, so I'll, but... I'll tell you what, what, my, I, what okay, was going sure. on in my head. I remember um, I was waiting for cart to push a little bit past the corner mm -hmm. and I was going to window from the top left. I was like, all right, they're going to be positioned here. too far. Yeah, yeah. From right yeah, there. okay. That's great. I was completely wrong then. You know exactly what you're doing. Never mind. Yeah. Ignore. <laughs> no, no, no. You're right most of the time. Most of the time, I don't have a plan for this character. Most of the time, I don't. But... Perfect example of a time where you can lamp and then just start lasering people down. You yeah. threw a lamp, Ryan's safe. Realistically, um, if they commit enough pressure to killing Ryan and killing this lamp, I don't think your healing is going to be enough to save him anyway. But the fact that okay. we're at advantage means that they're likely not going to be able to kill him or the lamp in this situation. So you can you can just keep doing damage. Uh, okay. Obviously, health bars are uh, are a big priority for healers, and it, it's good that you are protecting healing for the most part. But in some situations, sometimes more aggression is warranted, and it actually. There's like this concept of like, um, like net damage, where it's like if you doing damage fast enough kills a target, so that they can't continue outputting damage, you're actually doing more um, to negate the enemy's damage than you would be by healing. So in situations like that, where you have the advantage, when you've already thrown your lamp out, when there's no one at immediate risk of dying, uh, right. killing those targets like that diva, like that Ryan, immediately means okay. you can you can have all the free time in the world after the fight's done to heal everyone up. Um, and whereas if you had taken the time to fully heal everyone in that fight specifically, I should say it was a one fight either way. It didn't really matter what you did. Um, right. But there are going to be fights where you need to prioritize getting a kill first and then stabilizing mm -hmm. after, because if you don't net that kill, it's going to be much, 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 much harder to get the healing in that you need to stabilize as much as you need. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. That makes sense. I, I, I think I'm way too conservative with the DPS sometimes. Hmm. With my window especially, like I want to heal my tanks up too much. I mean, your accuracy seems good, so I definitely think you can push it further by just like being that surprise damage dealer uh, in some of these fights. Unfortunately, even like we're my tank, fight, <laughs> we uh, we are struggling somehow. Okay. Yeah. Not too bad. See how fast you're building window, by the way. You're already at 83 percent, and we just used it. <laughs> I know. It's, it's almost like I should use it on cooldown. 
Ooh, it sounds like that Ryan just got stunned out of his... Again, I think you've got Lucio Brain on right now. Look at uh -huh. how close you're getting to your targets. Like if we just watch yeah. top down again. I know, it's so bad. It's a bad habit. <laughs> you're running up oh, to punch yeah. her in the mouth, dude. So yeah. again, <laughs> there's just that little disconnect. Firing like this keeps you so much safer from enemy threats. And it means that even if they want to threaten you, they have to commit movement cooldowns. They have to commit spacing to getting on you, which means they're opening themselves up to the people on point and the people around this way and stuff like that. Okay. Or, or people coming out this way. So this is um, sort of a, a tanking topic, but it also covers people who are flank threats. And you as a Baptiste, like even though maybe you're not doing the most damage, you need to be dealt with in a fight like this if you're the enemy team, because otherwise you're just free healing the whole time, right? Yeah, So for sure. as as a flank threat, you have to leverage your positioning in a way that benefits your team by one, keeping you alive and safe and good uptime, but also is a huge threat to the enemy where they have to choose between either dealing with you and exposing potentially their backline. Like if, for example, if D.Va flies in here and then backline members are just fully exposed, free shots from McCree, free isolation by Tracer, free shots from our D.Va, or they ignore you and they try to make this fight work and then they, they're walking into your line of sight. They're walking into the fight zone that you want and that's just perfect right. for you and then imagine just double that with window even more if you get it and we're, that and we're not playing yeah like they have they have bomb you can see they have bomb and mm -hmm. a visor and like i'm just in this terrible sight line <laughs> where i would have to run away you know if and i exactly. might die to the soldier so the yeah. uh the lucio beat means you're safe anyway like no matter where you play because you've got yeah. 10 million hp um, right but this should be a, a habit you start to build on baptiste where you prioritize yourself and your uptime and your line of sight more than just keeping up with the tanks like you would on Lucio or Brig or Moira. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. It's a bad habit. Although, oh, the team ball goes off the map. We take those. I will say, this was a good example of prioritizing damage in a fight that you needed to win. Because similar to when Lamp was keeping your Rhine alive, Beat is keeping your whole team alive and you can prioritize damage in the situation. But again, I would say the safer option for that would be instead of running straight onto point, maybe you jump up here. Maybe you flank around here. And then you've got options to fall back into this space rather than staying out in the open out on cart. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I think we lose here. Oh no, this is tragic. That visor. Yeah, the visor clutched. And honestly, I hate to say it, but I think you could have carried this fight if you had stayed safe to the visor. Uh, sure, you're right, yeah. <laughs> We're back on Moira for some stalling shenanigans. Hopefully, maybe we can turn it. We do have a si pretty significant spawn advantage. Mm. I know I d we don't want to talk too much about Moira, but I, I hated that fade. I just got to say. But, you know, <laughs> I'm bad about wasting my fade, for sure. So this this would be a good opportunity to maybe like use Lamp and stabilize for yourself. Um, but if you're going to fade, you already like walked around the corner and then faded. You already like yeah, yeah. you got out and then you faded and the HP you were at just to watch it one more time didn't even seem like immediately lethal. The, the tracer started reloading. Bit of an unfortunate orb as well, I gotta say. Aim, aiming it around here, we'll get a lot yeah. more uptime. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you saw tracer reloading and she blinked past you, and then yeah, yeah if you, imagine if you had faded right now, you could just get completely out. I, was, I had 160 <laughs> HP. Faded into a mega health pack. Yeah, which you were already walking towards anyway. Like if, if you were if you were out in the open and the tracer was dueling you, and then you fade to get around the corner itself, that would be fine. But you had kind of like already walked around the corner and then faded, which confused me. <laughs> that was bad. But it's a sort of overtime fight situation. A little bit of panic, a little bit of stress is natural. For sure. We're on, we're matching tank lines with the ball now, I'm just realizing. Probably because of the overtime. Probably, yeah, he's stuck on Ooh. that, I think. Tragic lamp. If that was, yeah. if he had just been able to jump around, he would have saved himself. But then the mines also stopped him from going this way, too. Um, so was it himself bad? Like, like, tell me, was that like a, was that a bad positioning for my lamp? 
I think it was a bit preemptive. So one, if you were doing it to save yourself and you were panicking and you needed it, that would have been fine. But if you're just lamping to stabilize this pressure, put it in the safest location possible. Okay. So right now it's going to get shot at and it's going to be taken down anyway. Right. Um, Whereas you want it to keep, you want it to stabilize and without giving up too much space. You want to hold this space. You don't want to walk back into spawn right now, basically, right? So the way we do that is by committing resources like lamp uh, to helping us stabilize uh, and then punishing members that are overextending to try and punish us despite these resources. What this lamp does is it stabilizes, but not for long enough because it's going to get shot down. So having a safer lamp here means they have to swing wider to shoot at it, gives you an extra one to two seconds, and that can be the fight difference maker. Okay. Pretty sure we're about to see them just melt this lamp. Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. even with just the ball shooting it, I guess it, it did its job. It took balls att- uh, attention away from the targets, as in yourself. Uh, but it could have been done more consistently by keeping it safer from the enemy sightlines coming in. If that ball had right. kept shooting you, for example, and like their soldier swung to k- kill the lamp, you might have died. Right. All right, I'm ready for the window play of the game. I think this is a, it's a late window, but I think it's pretty good. It could have been earlier though, if I remember. This is a really good position for it, just like we saw in offense. <laughs> Tracer goes down to the trap. The classic. Bit of an unfortunate reload timing. Um, this is something I noticed a little bit, but I won't, I don't, I don't want to call it a bad habit again until you get punished. Uh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> you have full healing grenades right now. You still have full healing grenades. And which would you argue is the most important part of your gun, the bullets or the healing grenades? Ah, uh, the healing. <laughs> so when a fight's breaking out like this, yes, doing damage is good, and having more ammo to do more damage throughout a fight is good. But when you really need healing, it's more important that you have those available um, compared to the, the alternative of bullets. So right. if instead of reloading here, you just focused on where the fight was going, even if it means just like shooting more bullets and staying low on bullet ammo, but high on healing grenades, you're still yeah. ready for a fight in that situation. Maybe right. you're not ready for an alt play because you want to do damage to your alt, but you're still ready to stabilize a fight. His mine's carried though. Yeah. <laughs> They're panicking through overtime. Ooh, no, my lamp! No. <laughs> You know what? Good news though, it survived the diva bomb. <laughs> it, it skipped. Did. It skipped on the wall there. Did you see it? Yes. Just I that did. extra amount of time it took in, in super uh, slow mo. No. Um, I was trying to get the maximum. I was trying to get the max <laughs> value out of it by yeah, using it. Squeezing it, it yeah. It's too much. Yeah. I will say, in emergency situations, diva bomb being a great example, aim straight down. Aim at the floor, okay. it goes up immediately. Even just like the slight amount of travel time it took from hitting the wall, bouncing, and then going up was like right. might have been enough to save you. If we go back slightly, I wonder if we can see like how it how it, oops. Okay, where's the diva ball coming through? Oh, it's a tragedy. So yeah, if it if this instead of hitting the stairs there, it hit the the ground directly, it goes up, I think, just right then. And yeah, as soon as it comes online, oh, that's like three frames. <laughs> I was like, I got time. I was like, yeah, I'll just use that last second because I know how long the diva bomb takes to go off. Mm-hmm. So I'm good. You had the right reaction time. It's just that skip <laughs> threw you off. Yeah, I think. You're and right. that happens when it hits walls. It happens when it hits like because like each one of these individual stairs counts as like a mini wall. It must have just bounced off the side of one. Oh god. Yeah, but then it's just chaos until we win here. Yeah. I think pretty clean overall um yeah there's not like any like major improvement points you can make like you're playing baptiste functionally well uh your reactions are good your mechanics are good um the biggest thing by far would be the positioning Uh, stuff we talked about i knew it was i knew it was going (laughs) in that's good to hear so yeah i'm not wrong um just to use first point as an example again there's so many opportunities to detach yourself from your main tank and right. this is likely a symptom of your your Lucio play um, and just your, your comfort on that hero as well, where you're applying the same mindset or the same muscle memory even to playing this hero as you do to Lucio, when in reality yeah. you have two very, very different kits, right? And, okay. And you know yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. So 
always be very conscious of maximizing your own kit. And I knew I knew I was like really I had really poor positioning, but I didn't know like how how it was poor. Okay. You know, like like you explained this to me that I was playing too tight. Like I didn't know that I was playing too tight with my tanks, but now I do. Obviously, going back and looking at it for sure. So uh, the, the one tip, and this is like such a generic statement, but the one thing I say about anyone wondering about positioning is you should be asking yourself one question: Are you in the best position to have the most impact over the next team fight? So what that means is not necessarily, I mean, sure, if you're sitting with the Reinhardt while he's dueling an enemy Reinhardt, you could probably have a ton of damage throughput, but you're probably going to die a lot sooner too, which means you're not having the most impact over time throughout a team fight. Versus if you're okay. back here and your Reinhardt's up here, you're going to be able to do the same amount of healing. You're going to be able to stabilize your Reinhardt. You're going to be able to weave in damage, maybe not as much. Maybe you won't get your melees in and stuff like that. Uh, but you're going to be able to do stuff for a lot longer and therefore your impact over time is going to be much greater. Okay. And this applies Makes to sense. any hero. Um, it, it would apply to when you're playing Lucio, if you want to opt for a more aggressive play or a more defensive play, which one's going to have more impact for this specific fight and for what reasons kind of thing. Right. So for Baptiste, you have to think about that. Think about where you want to position, where you're going to want to throw a lamp, where you're going to want to put up your window, where you're going to want to reposition during a fight if you want to flank or if you want to keep up with the team, that kind of stuff. Okay. I guess with Lucio, it's like um, I could just be wherever I want to be, like <laughs> in like two seconds. You know what I mean? Yeah, so exactly. It's 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 more like forgiving. Reducing the wheels. Yeah, it's much easier to get make those things happen versus versus yeah. a hero like Baptiste, who sure he can jump, uh, but it takes him a little while to commit to these areas. Right, so you have to think ahead of time. So exactly. yeah, I need to do better about that for sure. And yeah, so. just like we talked about earlier, having that game plan mapped out in your head. Um, so you don't need to think about it in the middle of a fight can work wonders for for people. So try as best you can to identify members on your team that can help you. In this case, it's okay. very easy. Ryan and Diva are going to be fighting in locations, and all you have to do is stay in line of sight of them. If they push okay. up, you'll probably have to rotate to catch up with them. If they're bursting right. around corners, you want to disconnect after that fact so that you can help them at range. Okay. Um, versus someone like Ball Hog, we saw, you're going to have to play a lot more independently as someone like Baptiste. Right. You're likely not going to be able to keep up with both tanks or sometimes even one of the tanks at any given moment. So you need to play a lot more selfishly, a lot more conservatively, and be really aware of potential threats, potential flanking soldiers running around the map, flankers like Tracer, Farah's coming over the top roof. Um, you have to be a lot more conscious of those things, even if it means taking a hit to your personal uh impact on the game even if it means doing less healing doing less damage um you're always going to be doing more damage and healing when you're alive than when you're dead so take okay. that into consideration first all right well did you uh, have uh, pretty... any questions or comments or anything uh no i i had some questions but i think we went through them all um <laughs> okay that's good to hear yeah thank you so much like this is very helpful and i'll try to get better off of it <laughs> awesome <laughs>